I'm Gemma Tully. I'm the research associate on the Refit project and I'm working with the Durham University side of the team. Now, as you'll know from the introductory video, which Tom presented, the Refit project is all about working with stakeholders to understand the values that different people invest in cultural landscapes. And from understanding those values, trying to find a way to manage these cultural landscapes sustainably for the future. This film is going to explore how we did that. How did we gather data and how did we work with the stakeholders across all those different landscapes in Europe? So in the context of the Refit project, stakeholders can be anyone with an interest in our cultural landscapes. So that includes farmers, tenant farmers, local residents, politicians, local businesses, leisure users, wildlife professionals, basically anyone who is invested in those landscapes. And to work with those different stakeholders, we had some set approaches to try and gather data and to engage them and perhaps change different groups' perceptions of those landscapes. So the first step was gathering perceptions. What do our different stakeholders think about these landscapes? How do they understand how they're managed? What are their hopes for the future? To gather this data, we did various things. First of all, we got people to draw on a map of the different landscapes where they think the boundaries were, so that we could see how local people saw the area versus a farmer, to see if there were different landscape scales, different interests. And we amalgamated all of those perceptions to try and create a heat map so that we could look where the focus of understanding of cultural landscapes were. After having those maps, we then ask specific questions of our stakeholders. What's special about the landscape? What do you do within the landscape? How do you think it's managed? Do you understand the laws and policies connected to the landscape? To try and draw out if there were particular groups who understood one area better than another, to see if people were talking to each other and engaging to find out who was working together. So that was step one. Step two was coming up with some engagement events. So once we'd gathered the data and we figured out who was talking to who, what was important, what people knew, where the gaps in knowledge were, we then needed to create an event that would bring farmers, residents, wildlife professionals together to perhaps change the way they think about those landscapes. Because for example, as archeologists, we're very guilty of putting our head down a hole and only seeing the ancient landscape, where of course farmers and residents are thinking about what they do today in those landscapes. So we started to come up with engagement events, things like doing auguring, so drilling down into the soil, something that actually appeals to people across stakeholder groups. The farmers, of course, are fascinated by soils. It's key to what they do. Then the archaeologists want to see how the soils have changed because that will show us if there have been changes in the environment. Have the rivers moved? Has there been hill wash? How have people, when they started farming, caused the soil to deteriorate and break up? Those same issues are fascinating to wildlife professionals to think about habitat and changing environment. And then, of course, if you live somewhere or use it for leisure, it's not something that you generally think about. What was this landscape like in the past? How has it changed? Because as we've seen from our data, most people tend to think that landscapes stay the same, which is of course the message that we've been trying to get across in the Refit project. Landscapes change, humans are responsible for that change, and the natural world is responsible for that change. Other things that we did in the UK, we had engagement events, open days at Greystones Farm, where we invited families to come in, have a go at making an Iron Age roundhouse, also to try auguring, to do wildlife trails, to look at the farm, to see how within Greystones Farm, all those different elements of management, the wildlife, the farming, the leisure, the archeology span come together. And that's what makes it such a special landscape. In Spain, at Ulaca, for example, they have a big cultural festival where they basically relive the ancient Iron Age culture and they do plays and there's music. So that was a very different kind of engagement event. But again, bringing people into the landscape, celebrating that landscape. And in France, again, they've done various engagement events um, from tours and site tours to looking at the forest and how the land is managed today. So it, we've tried to do a real range of engagement events that will pick up on the interests of all different stakeholders and bring them together, most importantly, to share their different areas of knowledge and to learn about the landscape and to think about how they want that landscape to look in the future and how it should be managed. The other element of the project that was really important was looking at it from a more academic perspective. So we had three workshops. 
The first one was in Babracte in France in 2016, which basically tried to look at what was the situation now, drawing best practice from across landscape management, looking at current theories, not only working with our stakeholders, some of whom we invited to Babracte, and also our partners within Refit, but also inviting other international experts in different areas of landscape management to come and look at the current state of landscape management. And the second workshop moved on from that. That was in Ulaca in Spain. It was actually in Avila, which is very near Ulaca. And at that workshop, we aimed to think about the events, the engagement events. What were we doing in our different cultural landscapes? How could we creatively bring our stakeholders together across these different interest groups? And again, we invited other researchers and uh, stakeholders from the, the different landscapes to come along and share their ideas and best practice on innovative ways of working with stakeholders from different backgrounds. And the third and final workshop was in the UK in Sirencester, which is near Badgenden and Salmonsbury, our two UK case studies. And there we were really trying to pull everything together. What were the successes and challenges of the project? What are the lessons that we think we can learn and how can we turn our data, whether it's from the events, from the perception gathering, into something that could help influence policy and actually be useful in terms of sustainable, integrated strategies for landscape management in Europe in the future. And on top of doing our own workshops, we also made sure that we tried to get to as many other international workshops as we could to share the messages of the Refit project more widely and hopefully to engage other academics working not just in Europe, but more internationally with the message of landscape change and to see what other ideas were out there. And finally, another really important aspect of the project was making sure that our messages about landscape management and landscape change and collaborative working within managing landscapes wasn't just confined to our stakeholders at the small landscape scale, but was reaching even further. So we developed resources, online resources, that explored our landscapes and also that asked questions of people from other places near our cultural landscapes to draw in more opinions and get a wider perspective about what landscapes mean, how they're managed and how they should be managed sustainably for the future, as well as to share our different stories about the landscapes that we had really come to understand and to be able to tell a narrative of those landscapes that did draw together wildlife, history, community and farming and to share that story with other people outside of those communities. Hopefully now you understand all the different elements of the methodology that we were using to try and draw together the perceptions of landscape, to change these perceptions of landscape, to find out how landscapes are managed, how people think they're managed, and how people could work together across different landscape interests to actually actively manage these landscapes more sustainably for the future.